Good morning. It's, I never understand why we do that to ourselves because that's so hard to follow. Like, I can't do that, so that's just not fair. Thank you for that. Um, so, as you know, we traveled to Belize a couple weeks ago, and there was 20 of us, and instead of having 20 individuals trying to come up here and talk and, and not have stage fright or anything like that, um, we put together um, some interviews and some videos of what happened in Belize. Um, but to let you know that if y'all would stand up, y'all that went, y'all that y'alls, you guys that went to Belize, if you'd stand up. Um, we have several that can't be here this morning, but and they're uh, what's great about that is they're mad at me because I have to say y'all can sit down. the The most consistent theme I gathered from the people that we took to Belize is that they just wanted the glory to go to God. And that it was completely evident in their actions and then and how they responded and how they acted. So if you would, please check this video out. I had originally planned to do a longer sermon. And when I started putting all the materials, whew, that last part got me a little bit, my bad. Um, when I was putting it together, it came out to be like 35 minutes long. And I was like, well, that's probably too long. So I, I can't possibly tell you how much more occurred and we're so naive to call it just oh we went to Belize and did a VBS it was so much more than that that I didn't even get to see it until I got back because when ah goodness there is something in the air (laughs) Woo! I uh the first night God put something on my heart and so I, I had us pray and and I'm sure they all thought I was weird and and, and when I did this, but we were all together, and we had a, we would do a day, and then we would recap the day and go over anything we needed to change or any information we needed to put out after we got back to the training center. And I told them, I said, hey, I'm going to pray something weird, and I want you to have it your honest prayer too, but I prayed that while we were in Belize or even after, that whatever God did, that we would never know, so that all the glory would go to God. And that became the theme for us is like, we didn't care what happened. We just wanted to make sure that people got to know God through us. And I, I didn't realize almost all the other stuff that happened because I was busy making sure everybody was safe and we got where we were supposed to on time and everything like that, that it wasn't until I started cutting the videos and seeing and really listening to what our, our missionary said that I was like, wow, God did some amazing things just with a little VBS. Um, and it got me thinking when uh, Pastor David said, hey, if you're preaching, I need the name of your sermon. And I was like, what? what? I always forget about that part, that it's got to be called something. And so I was like, I just emailed him back, and I just said, follow me. And that was a, a, a thing that God, since we st- I started preaching camp, had been working with me on about following him. And I get you get that from Matthew 4.19, and I apologize if I talk fast, uh, it doesn't help that I'm a little emotional, so, but in 419 it says, and he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, and I've read that verse a hundred times, probably a thousand, and, and understood it and seen it, but it wasn't until I started preparing for the Sunday that I found out something that I did not know and had never come across and had ever known. He was talking to Simon Peter and his brother Andrew, but the fact is, is that Simon Peter and Andrew had already been following God for, I mean, Jesus for a year. They'd already met him, and Andrew met him first, and and they had been with him and done stuff, but they had consistently gone back to their boats and continued to fish like their old life. And that's the day that Jesus called them out and said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. So they immediately dropped their nets, and they went and follow Jesus, and we always think, and it's referenced in John, where Andrew met Jesus a year before that, and we're always like, oh, it just started right there, they dropped their nets and left, but even what I call the knuckleheaded disciples, it took them a year to get it, and how much longer it's gotten me to get that when he calls us to follow him, it's a total commitment. I, uh, I was, many of you know, I was in the military, I was airborne, and uh, in jump school, you run everywhere, and you get exhausted, and you put on all this gear, and you have a front parachute and a back parachute, and we'd always make jokes, because we'd ask if we 
they'd always jump master would tell us that uh you know do we how, how quickly do we have to the, the ability to pull our reserve parachute and one jump master looked at me he said you have the rest of your life oh okay and uh it w we would ask other questions, and the jump master would tell us, well, don't worry about your reserve, because if you actually go into combat and you're jumping in, they don't even give you a reserve, because you don't have time to pull one if it, your main chute doesn't open. And so they tell us all before our first jump. <laughs> so by the time we get our first jump, and we put all the gear on, and we strap it on, and we're sitting in the plane, and it takes off, and I, well, I'm a 20-year-old I'm kid that's scared to death, and because... I'm more worried about my reserve not opening than my actual chute opening. And the jump master tells us to stand up, and we stand up, and he tells us to hook up, and we hook up to the line, the static line. And then he checks the door, and he goes first. But before he goes first, he turns and says, follow me. And then everybody jumps out of that plane after the jump master. And the truth is, is we can put on the equipment, I can put on the parachute, I can put on this reserve, I can have the uniform, I can have the patch on my arm that says I was in Special Forces Airborne. But until the moment that I obey his command and follow him, I'm not airborne. I'm not anything. I'm just another guy on a plane. And though it's scary and you have no idea what awaits you when you step out that door, but it's like a leap of faith. You jump out of it. And actually, as because I'm standing here today, all 47 times I jumped out of a plane, the parachute opened. I didn't ever have a malfunction, but it was that point when that jump master would say, follow me. You weren't doing anything until you actually did it. And in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you and behold, behold. I am with you always to the ends of the age. That was Jesus talking to his disciples a few moments before he was ascended into heaven and they were left alone and they obeyed him and they went back to Jerusalem and they waited. And through those 11, which eventually became 12 again, Jesus and God turned the world upside down with 11 people and I challenge us as a church and more to myself is what am I doing every day to follow Jesus am I following him in everything that I do am I coming to work and, and just preparing for activities on Sunday morning or Wednesday night with the youth but the question is how am I going forth and making disciples of all nations so I challenge us to think about it whether it's Belize whether it's our neighbors. That's one of the biggest things I got out of hearing Roxy's and Kristen's story about the couple. And we got to see the house, and that joker got burnt down. She wasn't playing. You build things out of sticks, it goes up quick. And that was their life. And I used to be a cop, so I saw that same scenario in neighborhoods in all the cities that I've lived in. And unfortunately, Belize doesn't have the same. If she would have done that in the States, of course, she'd be in prison right now. And There'd be CNN reporting on it and all that kind of stuff, but there wasn't. And so they literally just move on with their lives, and, and he has to sleep with one eye open, I guess, for the rest of his life. But that's the same situations that we have here. So not only is God calling us to go to Belize and El Salvador and all these other things, but there's a neighborhood of lost and hurting people that are right around us, and are we following him to even reach them as well? So that's my challenge to myself, and hopefully this morning it might become your challenge to you is, are we going to follow him? If you would bow with me. Dearly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to travel to all nations and share the, your good news. And you say that it's not just about you, but that we're to minister them through faith and through needs and through actions. And I pray that you just help us as a church recognize the times and the needs that we need to do that and what we need to do and give us direction through your Holy Spirit and give us opportunities individually and as a whole to fulfill your great commission to go and tell all nations about you. I just thank you for the opportunity to come and worship freely in this country and just let us recognize the ways and, and, and needs that we need to reach those around us. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to serve you, Lord.
In Jesus' name I pray, amen.